Welcome into another Kong Show, coming to you from the Pink Cow. This time we have a very special guest. His name is Stephen Bryan. He's a book author, renaissance man, actor. Welcome to the Kong Show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You have a book out. It's called Black Passenger, Yellow Cabs. Why that title? Yes, Black Passenger, Yellow Cabs, Off Exile and Excess in Japan. That's a secondary title. You know that title? I think it's because I, I remember Shoko Ida's book called Yellow Cabs, right. and, I, and I am a black person living in Japan, or I was living in Japan between the years of 2001 and 2008, and I was having this experience, and I thought I, I, I thought I'd just use the title, Black Passenger Yellow Cabs. All right, tell us a little bit about Yellow Cabs. It, of course, refers to that book from back in the 80s, and Yellow Cabs refers to what? Um, okay, so Yellow Cabs, the term started in the 80s in New York, and it was originated by a white men in New York uh, in reference to Japanese women. They apparently thought that they were Japanese women were readily available for intimate excursions, and so the term came, made its way back to Japan in the 80s and 90s, and, and Japanese women reappropriated the term, much like how black people in America reappropriated the word nigger and sort of took the sting out of it. You know, there was a yellow cab production that was very big in the 90s and the 2000s here in Japan. Yellow cab fashion labels, shoes, clothes. And so I thought since this thing was out of the term, I would just go ahead and use it for my title. Now, you said you had experiences here in Japan. What kind of experiences are you talking about in this book? <laughs> well, I, well, well, yes, I lived in Japan from 2001 to 2008. And I uh, had some very positive experiences, in fact, a very uh, eye-opening experience. It was a rebirth, so to speak, when I moved here. And those are the experiences that I documented, good and bad, in the book Black Passenger Yellow Cabs. Is this a sexy book? I would say so. You know, uh, some, people might <laughs> some people might even call it pornographic. But really? No, it's an erotic, it's a very erotic book. It's an erotic ethnographic memoir. Mm -hmm. So the erotic aspect is about the erotic capital of black and white men in Japan. And I talk about the difference in the sex, difference between the sexual dynamics of Japan versus that of the West. Uh, and the ethnography aspect is just a comparative study, if you may, between the social status of women in Japan versus women in the West. And then the memoir aspect is about, is about my journey from Jamaica to America to the UK to now Japan as a sex addicted, depressed, suicidal person who overcame all those oh, wow. ailments. So it's a tri-genre work. What was your method for writing this book? I mean, did you have an experience method. and then after the experience you wrote about it? Or what was your, <laughs> how, how, how did it come about? I'm kind of curious about that. Yeah. I wish it was that mythological, but it wasn't. Um, I, I, I had been writing, I, I thought about blogging, but I sort of didn't quite like the idea. But I, I started a diary of sorts about my experiences. And then... Um, I left, I left Japan for about six months in 2005 and to Jamaica and came back. And that's when I started writing the book. And I just basically started sitting down and reflecting on my life from Jamaica, the ghettos of Jamaica, to Kobe, Japan. And I was trying to figure out how I got here. And I started taking notes and jotting down my experiences. And then one thing led to another. And, you know, uh, every day, almost every day, for up to 17 hours a day, a year and 10 months later, we have uh, 135,000 words, a 372-page erotic memoir. Uh, congratulations on Thank that. You. Thank the you. The book was published where? It was published in the States. Is it available here in Japan? Yes. In fact, I just checked it on Amazon Japan, and it says in red, bold red kanji, ninki. I was like, whoa, and I was shocked. So have you been in a bookstore? Have you seen your book actually on the shelf? I haven't seen it on the shelf here because um, it's not officially published in Japan, only, in, uh, only on Amazon. Uh, but it's also in the process of getting translated to Japanese to be published officially in Japanese. Wow. So, now, I understand you're doing a lot of other things related to this book. You have a play, and you also have a film that's going to be coming out as well, right? Yes. I, um, there's a play, Do the Boy. I don't laugh. That's the actual title. Um, so basically what happened was... Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. We've got to go back to that title. Can you say that a little bit more slowly for me? The play is called What? <laughs> Unko kodomo, doodoo boy. <laughs> Unko kodomo. No, 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 it's doodoo boy. I see. Doo -doo boy. Doo -doo. Oh, so really, it means you're Unko. talking about 
I, I'm talking about human Ungo. feces. Yes, I'm talking about crap. Really? Can I say shit? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I'm talking about shit. It's called it's mid shit boy basically, caca boy. Why? In why, why that title for your play? <laughs> um, well, your read, your listeners can't see the postcard, but they can go online and see the postcard for Duda Boy. The picture that you see in the postcard um, was of, is of me at four years old. So two weeks after that photo was taken in Jamaica, I fell in a cesspool. Oh. And it came out in the newspapers. When I was free, it came out in the newspapers. And that's the name that stuck with me forever. I couldn't get a girlfriend for a very... I couldn't get a girlfriend at all, period. Nobody would go out with Duda Boy. And uh, it was... Uh, 15 years of of that name and so I've reclaimed it so you started out as a doo-doo boy yes I am I not, have not, yeah. nothing like Jimi Hendrix song Voodoo, Voodoo Child Voodoo didn't write yes no, but uh, you different. started out as a doo-doo boy I smelled boy. worse than you Voodoo smelled Child. terrible and you came yeah. out smelling like a I rose because <laughs> now you've got a book a play and a, a, a film in progress right <laughs> right uh, it's a mini series actually let We're me right. find out a little bit more about this play you're currently putting this play on here in Japan right yes I'm going to be here right here at the Pink Cow uh, February 15th and 16th and the play started when Deborah Erhardt, who's affiliated with Tom Hanks, read Black Passenger and came to me about writing a solo play based on Black Passenger. And this is about three years ago when I was ready to come back to Japan after being in America for about two and a half years. And I resisted, and she begged, and I acquiesced, wrote the play, started performing it in, in L.A., opened it in the Santa Monica Playhouse in Los Angeles last January, and I've uh, been touring the country, off-Broadway, on-Broadway, San Francisco, Berkeley, and uh, now Japan, then Jamaica, Toronto, London. I'm back to Japan to do it in Japanese uh, later this year. Wow, this is huge. What kind of a production is it? How many members in the cast? Uh, w what's going on with this it's play? It's very huge. It's, it's so big. It's just me. Just you? Yes. A one-man play? It's a solo play. It's me. I'm doing nine characters. Wow. Can you give us a sample, a little sample of something that you do in this play? Um, well, that's, I think the, probably the most appropriate place to start would be the beginning, the first, the opening scene. This is a scene where I'm four years old. My mother catches me playing with myself. Oh. And uh, we lived on a church commune. <laughs> we lived on top of a church, uh, literally on top of a church, in a church commune. And I so see. my mother march me down to the pastor to get the demons exercised out of me. So, Do you act this out in your play? Yes. I, really? Or are we going to see you playing with my, yourself? Well, we, we, you're not going to see me playing with myself. In the opening act? Not in the opening yeah, yeah, No, no okay. but you're going to see my mother. You're going to see, you're going to, the opening act is, Steve, what is that you're doing, you disgusting little boy? Come here to me. You know, you really should be getting a beating right now. Bishop, would you believe I caught Steve playing with himself this morning? If that's not the work of Satan, then I don't know what is. Oh, yes, Sister Jean. Oh, yes. That is indeed the work of Lucifer and all his angels. Let me get the consecrated oil. So that's the... Wow, that's very... So you do all the characters. I do all the characters. Men, women, boys. Japanese characters are there too. The last act is set in Japan. Give us a sample of your Japanese character. Uh, <laughs> there's a... There's a <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to have to come to the play for that. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, your listeners are going to have to come to the play to see the, uh, the, the, the remaining characters. Again, it's going to be happening February, what were the dates? February 15th and 16th. So uh, a great idea for Valentine's, uh, night after Valentine's, actually, right? Actually, perfect. Uh, there are two shows on the 15th, which is on a Sunday, 4.30 and 8.30. And there's one show on Monday night at 9 o'clock. How much are tickets, and are there any available? You know, I think tickets are are on reservation only. They're 3,500 yen, but they're 4,000 by the door or at the door. So you're, you, it should behoove you, all of you, to get your tickets uh, ahead of time because the seating is very, very limited. I understand the ticket price also includes dinner. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. nice dinner that's available. And the chef here is awesome. I just had an amazing burrito. And I'm telling you, it's uh, it's going to be quite a treat. Everybody I, says I didn't realize Pink Cow has I, the best burritos in oh, town. Oh, yes. This yeah. is definitely 
Yeah. Better burritos than in Mexico, for God's sake. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. Tracy makes them right here. Oh yes. oh, yes. So the ticket price includes dinner. Does it include drinks as well? I don't think so. Okay. But, but, and what kind of costumes do you have in this play? Or do you wear a costume? I don't wear or any costumes. What, what do you do? It's just me. I change just, my voice. I change my countenance. I change my body language. I, I change, um, but I don't change costumes because the, the, the performance is 95 minutes and there is no time for costume change. It's, it's, it's simple black box theater. So you've memorized the entire play? The entire 95 minutes. It took me three months to memorize. I sat in wow. Griffith Park in Los Angeles uh, for three months from uh, January through March, eight hours a day. And, and for the record, it takes an hour and a half to memorize one minute worth of material. So it took quite a while. All right. Uh, is there any music involved in this play? Um, no. I, I Pre-show music is uh, a, a friend of mine, um, Mark Anthony Abel from London, but there is no music Within the show. So you mentioned also before that it's going to be turned into a film. Tell us about that project. Well, well Black Passenger, Yellow Cabs, and Duty Boy is being adapted to a, a miniseries. I think it would just be too long for a film. Uh, we're, we're still in the process, but we're th I think we're, we're going in the direction of a TV miniseries. We're in the process of uh, creating or shooting the preview now in order to assemble the team and raise the funds. And um, chances are it's probably going to be funded by... An American or a Western company, uh, who knows, Amazon or Netflix or HBO or Showtime, one of those people. We're, we're targeting those guys. You said we are working on this. So who is we? Can I ask uh, that? My director, uh, Gregory Stennett, and, uh, and I, we're assembling the team. How do you see this as a miniseries? What's it going to look like? I think it's going to be beautiful. I think it's going to be like nothing on TV at the moment. Uh, I think there's nothing about, I don't think there's anything on Western TV about, I mean, set in Japan about a Westerner's experiences in Japan. I think it's going to be captivating. Is this going to be you only, or will there be a cast? Oh, there'll be a cast. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, a cast. so you're a not going to be doing the, all the various right. no, 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 characters? No, no, no. It's not no, going to be like a Robin Williams no. kind of thing in no, no, Good no, no, Morning no, no, no. Vietnam. Absolutely not. I'm, there's going to be a cast. We're going to be doing a casting call any minute now, in a couple of, couple of weeks, should be. And where will it be shot? In Japan. Ah, here so in Japan. On location on here location in Japan. On location in Japan. In Roppongi or? Uh, we, I think in Tokyo. I'm not sure about Roppongi, but I'm sure there'll be some scenes in Roppongi. Some of the shots are going to be in in Okinawa because uh, we have to shoot. I don't know if I could say this. We have to shoot in Okinawa for Jamaica. Ah, okay. Well, you just said yeah, it. I just. <laughs> okay. Nobody will know that unless they listen to this podcast. Uh, right. And to this Which is like right? all of the planet. All of the, you know, the, the, the <laughs> secrets are always right here in the Kong show. Are you looking for cast members? Are you looking for people to participate? Are you looking for oh, yeah. actors and actresses? We're here actually in looking for actors Japan. and actresses. We're looking for, um, for, for production personnel to producers, uh, directors of photography. We're looking to assemble a team. Well, you know, yeah. there is a film society here in Japan among foreigners and there's a facebook site all about it Actors, really? yeah i forgot the exact name of the facebook site but there is one i'll turn you on to it a absolutely little bit later. thank you very very much thank yeah, you very much uh, that might be very yeah. helpful for right. you well stefan is there anything more you'd like to say about uh, what you're doing here in japan i'm doing uh, quite a few things now i'm actually in the process of of embarking on a music career too in, in japanese uh, hold, hold on here. Wait a minute. What, what do you mean you're embarking on a music career? Well, well, a friend of mine, Mark Anthony Abel, I should pronounce that more slowly, Mark Anthony Abel, so that you can find him on iTunes. He's from London. He's allowed me permission. He's given me permission to record his entire first album, Sunshine's in My Head, in Japanese and, and, and perform the album. So, so you're going to sing in Japanese? Yeah, yeah. Do you speak Japanese? Oh, thank you, this Nick. Oh, it's a beautiful day. So done, eh? Hi, All right. Hi, hi. So, so I, along with book, author, Renaissance man, actor, I should also put singer. Uh, yes, and there's going to be a, a, a musical element to Do the Boy. In fact, when I go to Jamaica in March, because uh, the tour officially starts in Jamaica in March, going into the studios with Sly and Robbie Crew, we're writing the music for Do the Boy as we speak, and so it's going to be um, going to, the, the objective is to take it back on Broadway, but with Multimedia this time. I don't know if you've seen uh, uh, Mike Tyson's show. He did a solo show. I forgot the title. The title has slipped my mind, but I'm sure if I stop trying to remember it, it'll come back to me. Uh, sure. So the music is going to be kind of a, it's going to have a reggae feel to it? I think reggae slash 
J pop slash international feel to it. Very because interesting. Because the, the, the play takes place in Jamaica, America, and Japan. So it's a very international play. It's, mm. a, it's a very international uh, idea. And so we wanted, I wanted the music to portray that international feel, that international experience that you get from Do the Boy. So if you put like reggae music together with kind of anka, they both have that same kind of beat. Uh, it would be reggae. It would be reggae. Regenka. 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 Right. There's yeah, reg- a yes. new type yeah. of music Enge. born right here. Engre. Enge. In the Kong show. Yes. Regenka. 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 Yes. Yeah, right. That's it. That's it. So do you have any song titles yet? Uh, we don't have any titles as yet. Actually, we do, but they're not worked out as yet. We, we have a few, three titles so far. What are you singing about? Uh, I'm singing about my experiences in the show, especially about the pit falling the pit? into the What is the pit? The do the pit, what well, I'm to you, you're not listening to me when I say the do the pit, I'm dropping the do the pit, you can't hear, you can't hear, no, you can't hear. There comes that Jamaican accent. Man, I, I love that, I'd love to hear that. <laughs> you pull that right out, huh? Well, you know, I love Jamaica, I was born in Jamaica, so I left, left Jamaica when I was 15, so it's still with me. What do you miss most about Jamaica? Fruits. But fruits? You, yeah, you yeah. know, Jamaica has some really exotic fruits, but you can get them in Thailand and Singapore. And what do you love most about Japan? Aesthetics. You came back right, to yes, Japan. Yes, after you, you five and a half years. Five absence. and a half years, you were missing Japan. You I were was jonesing for Japan. Miserable away from Japan. And you decided to come back. Yeah. Why did you decide to come back? I just got tired of being homesick. I got tired of being homesick for five and a half years. So you think Japan is your home? You feel yeah, Japan? Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. feel at home here from in Japan? From the day I landed in April 14th, April, no, April 18th. 2001. Getting back to specifics, what do you love most about Japan? I think the number one thing I love about Japan is the aesthetics. I like the fact that beauty is, is, is of utmost importance in this, in this society. Everything has to be beautiful. I'm kind of shadow like that. I like everything to be kawaii. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Um, and I, I like the, well, at least on the surface, the harmony of, of Japan. I mean, it's not perfect. No society is perfect. But I like, I like the beauty of this country. I like the, aesthetic, uh, the aesthetics of this country. Anything about Japan that disturbs you? Ah, disturbing things about Japan. No central heating! Jesus! So Why doesn't the average house have central bloody heating? Okay, never mind. And that's it. That's yeah. the only thing. Well, that's not the only thing. But I mean, you know, I, I talk about that, and in, 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 I talk about that in Black Passenger Yellow Cabs. Oh, you do. Ah, oh, okay. But um, but for the most part, like I said, you know, no society is perfect, and I think that I can deal with Japan's imperfection more than I think societies are like marriages. No marriage is perfect. It's perfect. What about the future? Do you have anything else uh, that you're planning to do? You're doing the film. You're doing the play. Any books in the works? Well, I did write a second book while I was in the state. It's called Only Begotten. What's that about? Um, that's fiction, and it's a tr- it's a transgender. It's a gender bender. It's a that's fiction. So you're saying Black Passenger Yellow Cab is it's a is, documentary it, kind of? It's not fiction. It's not it's fiction. Non, it's all it's 100% true. It's hundred percent non-fiction. Like, or, or do you use names? I have to use pseudonyms, pseudonyms because okay. a lot of the people I wrote about, I'm still in contact with them. Oh, do they know that this book has been written about them? <laughs> Maybe two people know, but the rest don't. In fact, one person, I won't say the name, but one person read the book uh-huh. and said to me, wow, the book is really, really interesting. I'm glad I'm not in that book, but in fact, she is. She is. All right. Uh, so, by the way, how are book sales? Uh, book sales are great. You know, the first time when I first went back to America, my first interview was with Howard Stern, and I think that kicked it off. That uh, really, you were on with Howard Stern. On the Howard Stern show, yes. Really, he, he quite liked the book. So sales are sales are. The book came out a few years ago, so sales peaked maybe about a year ago, and I think, but I think that with the advent of Do the Boy, the play. Sales will resurface, and it's going to be republished in the summer, as a matter of fact. so I'm sure our listeners would like to know a little bit more about this book. Can you tell us about one of your experiences that you write Wrote. about in your book? I think a lot of my readers find my mother-daughter experience one of the most memorable... Mother-daughter uh, experience? Yeah, Mother, I, was, well, I, no, I, I think people want to know more about... <laughs> 
your experience with one of the ladies here. Yeah, the, yeah, the mother and daughter experience. Oh, mother. Oh, I see. So you were with a mother and daughter. Well, so then they have to read the book. I'm not going to give it to them. Oh, but that, but just give us a little sample of it. T- t- tell us how it goes. Well, I, I was I was in the countryside. I was dating a girl, uh, and. I went to to visit her, and she was away. She went to work unexpectedly that day, and her mother made some gestures, and I uh, I did not reject her, and so we continued this relationship with both. I, I don't think the daughter doesn't know. The daughter didn't know. No, she never it, found right, out. Right. But, but you were right having fun with her mom. Great fun, actually. Actually, better fun with her mom than I was with the daughter because the daughter was. But yeah, so she was. Are you still in contact with the mom and? I'm still daughter? in contact with with them. Yes, I saw them about three weeks ago. Very interesting. Yes. Okay, and then you have other experiences like that in this book. Well, there are no other mother daughter experiences. Um, that was the only one. But there are. I, I thought you were going to say you were with the mother, and the mother went to work, and you wound up with the daughter. No, it no. was the other way around. Okay. The, the mother hadn't uh, been copulatorily active for twenty years. All right, let's get back to this other book that you wrote. It's called what? It's called Only Begotten. And what's uh, this one about? And this, this book is, um, I don't know if you've seen a film called Secrets and Lies. Um, a I long time not. ago, it's Secrets and Lies meets Oedipus. Uh, oh, um, poke your eyes out. A, <laughs> Transamerica meets meets the crying game, so to speak. Oh, it, it's a gender bender. It's about, it's about a transgender, a transsexual, well, she's pre-transsexual, Jamaican who about her experiences in Jamaica, who flees to the UK to get political asylum. And this book is available where? That, this book is only available on the, Amaz- on the Amazon Kindle, only because we're in the process of, uh, it's been optioned, and we're in the process of um, writing the screenplay for, uh, and if you know who Paul Buckner is, Paul Buckner is the writer-producer of the film The Full Monty. Ah, He's okay. optioned the book, and we're in the process of writing the screenplay now for him to direct and we are planning on changing the title as soon as we figure out what the title to the screenplay is going to be. So that's why the book hasn't been officially published, but it's available on the Amazon Kindle, has only begun. Well, you have a lot of things going on. We wish you all the best. Thank you, thank and you, thank you. And big success. I want to ask you one more question about your writing style. How do you write? Do you sit in front of your computer? Do you uh, take notes along the way? Do you dictate? What, what, what do you do? How do you I write? I mostly sit in front of my, my computer, my laptop, my orange Apple here. And I, my process is, fortunately, my ADHD, I am an ADHD adult, but it has waned in my old age. And so I can focus a bit more. So I can literally sit down in front of my computer for the whole day, 12, 15, 17 hours a day writing. And when I'm not writing in front of my computer, I use my iPhone. I use the, the, the memo feature on my iPhone to record what I'd like to write on the train. One of the great things about Japan um, and writing my book, the first book, was that a lot of it was written on the train. And I would get home and transcribe what, what, what I recorded on my iPhone. Oh, so my process is just really s- sitting down and, 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 and getting to it. And it, it flows out. If I sit long enough, an hour or two... It'll start flowing, and I, I hemorrhage it. That's my problem. And then you transcribe all your memos yourself? Yes, yes, yes. And I then see. I give it to an editor. I see. Oh. I don't do any editing myself. We are out of time. Stefan, Brian, thank you very much oh, for joining us here in me. the Kong Show. Truly a pleasure. Again, tell us when your play is going to be happening here at the Pink Cow in Roppongi. Uh, Pink Cow here in Roppongi, uh, February 15th and 16th, Sunday and Monday. Two shows on Sunday, 4.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. And in between that, there's a nice dinner. Uh, and Monday night at 9 o'clock, right here, Rapungi at the Pink Owl. Stefan Bryan, thank you, thank you very much. I got to do that Hi. I'm bowing. Doo doo boy. A quick thank you to Tracy Consoli at the Pink Cow for fueling this interview. She has some new burritos on her burrito list. She has the chicken burrito, bean and cheese burrito, beef burrito, samosa burrito with curried chickpeas, yogurt, and homemade chutney, plus a grilled vegetable burrito with red beans, rice, spicy tomato, parmesan cheese, and of course, the barbecue pork burrito with stir-fried vegetables, chickpeas, and rice. The small size, 1,180 yen. Large size, 1,575 yen. New burritos at the Pink Cow. 